Everybody, welcome to another episode of the Babylon Games Cast. I am one of your hosts, Andrew Beller, aka Major Gains, and I am joined tonight by Johnny, aka Black Kool Aid No Sugar Added. How you doing, buddy? Doing pretty good. How are you, sir? I am hyped and ready to talk about video games, but we're not there yet. We still have some more introductions to go through. Crisco is also here tonight. How you doing, friend? I am doing excellent. How are things uh, up north? Uh, pleasantly warm i don't know uh it's it's, it's They're actually, toasty today, here too man well i was gonna say today was actually kind of a break in the weather it was only like 72 degrees a little breezy it was, it was nice it was good to get outside kind of enjoy the weather but god i wish we're also here with half of on the couch duteous max oh, hello you? half half of us is represented today yeah some might say the better half Ooh. I, I wouldn't. That's. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, rounding out our little team of fun friends is my older brother, Bellerific himself. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for hosting. Uh, away from the normal space. That's why I had asked someone else to do it because I <laughs> yeah. do not have my typical uh, 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 equipment. I am uh, kind of makeshifting things so that I can yeah. uh, be on tonight. But I really, really wanted to be on and. Here we are. So I'm great. Yeah. How are you doing? Just to make sure somebody asked the host. I'm actually doing pretty good. Uh, Johnny did ask, but thank you again. <laughs> it's always nice to answer again. Um, this is the moment of the show where everybody take a drink if you got one. I, I did. Yeah. As I said, this <laughs> is the Babylon Games Cast, where we record every single Friday night over on twitch.tv slash Babylon Gaming app. 8 p.m. Central Time. You can support the show over there by subscribing over on our Twitch. But if you have no money to toss, you can go over to youtube.com slash Babylon Gaming where we upload a load of content, whether it's our Twitch streams or sometimes we make YouTube videos like myself. Right now over on the channel, we have an episode up where I discuss my thoughts and opinions so far on Skyward Sword. And I have to admit, I think the game's better than Breath of the Wild. If you want to know more about that, go over to youtube.com slash Babylon Gaming. You can watch the video, comment on there. Tell me how much of an idiot I am for thinking that. Or, you know what, just so a quick little reminder, if you're over on twitch.tv slash Babylon Gaming and you have Amazon Prime, you also have Twitch Prime. We haven't talked about that in a long time. If you got Twitch Prime, that means you have one free Twitch subscription that you can give to any one of your favorite subscriber streamers <laughs> and subscribe to them. And if we entertain you at all, I really sincerely hope you want to come hang out with us and give us your one free Twitch sub. But with that all out of the way you know what i want to just dive into some stuff really quick so johnny i got a question for you yo what is going on with this ps5 system update all right well apparently there's a, a system update beta so with contained in this beta is a couple of things that were sought after especially one in particular because of the internal storage being so small because you can only load up so many games, and then it's like, two or three games, done. So, and plus, the external hard drives you can actually put in there, it was only a, a working PS4 games, and then they had an update where you can actually put PS5 games on there, but still, space is space. So, w with this current up, uh, software update beta, you can now insert an M got to ssd to your ps5 expansion slot and use the storage just like uh your ps5 store uh console storage you can install ps5 and ps4 games on an m.2 ssd uh and it's uh first minimum capacity is 250 gigs and the maximum is uh two terabytes which i looked online and those things go for the basically the same price as the digital version of the PS5. Mm -hmm. And not to mention that those need heat sinks as well. Mm -hmm. So, to each his own, you want to do it, fine. But they're, they're, they, they're a cost. They, they cost a lot. Just yeah. so you know. I'm trying to find how much they cost, actually, so we could talk a little bit about it. And uh, it's actually up to four terabytes, not two terabytes. Is that four? Oh, you did? I am so sorry. I am. Wow. Oof. <laughs> I did not hear that at all, and I do sincerely apologize, buddy. But yeah, those prices, man, I, 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 they're out of control. I, I, 
do you does that like what do you guys think about that do you guys really need to spend that much money i mean can't you just like delete games and just re and like download them at different times like do you need to spend a thousand dollars on a four terabyte ssd for your ps5 just just by physical so, you still gotta install it though yeah you still have to install it it's still taking up space on your uh computer yeah but that, it's way, that's it's hold way on quicker and easier Time out. Flag on the field. <laughs> Those are prices right now. Like th- this is this is not going to be the status quo, guaranteed. You will get better options, better pricing. That's going to come down. That's not going to be forever. Also, you still have the ability. If I remember correctly, you can actually um, use an external hard drive and plug it in, so you don't have to pay these ridiculous prices. I think the caveat, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong. Please tell me in the chat if I am uh, that you cannot play them off the external hard drive. You have to move them back over. Yes. Still a little bit of a pain, but it's I think better option than paying oh a thousand dollars for uh, the, uh, the to upgrade your memory for the PS5. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I was gonna say um, I do have an external hard drive, and I think I have like one terabyte, and it's been surprisingly well this is working out for me so in no shape or form am i going to get those because essentially like those ssds are first made for pcs and um and those are like pc prices so to do that for the ps5 it's only if you need it and but it's like if you just like got money to blow go for it Mm -hmm. go right ahead So uh, another point I'd like to bring up um, is we've talked about little Timmy and little Tommy before when when parents are shopping for them. Um, What do you think is going to be easier for parents to figure out this or what the Xbox is doing, which is just a little thing you plug in and it's just it's just right there. All you got to do is plug it in with the PS5. It's, you know, a little bit more, you know, trying to explain heat sinks to. To, mm-hmm. to mom and dad uh, trying to buy for Timmy and Tommy, I, I think might be a little bit difficult. So I think in that uh, regard, I think this wasn't necessarily the right decision, in my opinion, in terms of you know being customer friendly, uh, customer friendly to all. Um, however, I think, I don't know, if I remember correctly, I think the PS4 uh, user base age range was like 30 and up mostly was the, the most the demographic and i wouldn't be surprised if that's the demographic for the ps5 so little timmy and little tommy maybe we don't got to worry about as much but i don't know i think i still prefer what xbox is doing right now mm-hmm. even though i have a ps5 <laughs> right <laughs> yeah i know i completely understand because the, um the, with the xbox uh, series x you can actually upgrade the um the actual internal hard drive but even though just those two terabytes cost a grip like two hundred dollars. So, but the thing is, it's easier than actually getting, um, basically knowing ha- what specific one you need to get, and then also knowing how big those things are. You gonna have to get a heat sink also, and you have to make sure it's the right size so it can actually fit with inside the PS Five. So, cost effective. But you, if you want to do it, do it. If not, don't worry about it. Just get an external. Be done with it. So yeah. continuing on, next is you will be able to play 3D audio through your TV speakers. Now beforehand, you had the headset. Um, I forgot what the actual headset was called, but with that headset, you were able to use 3D audio for your your games, and they like the the actual audio surrounds you. Now those capabilities are able to be pushed through TV speakers, which. I want to actually uh, hear how those sound because for what I I've been hearing, they sound amazing. So I can't wait. Um, also, with that is little stuff here, here and there. Um, let's see from the library. Uh, let me see. The install tab is now the first tab you'll see, and making it easier to find games that are, aren't on your home screen, as well as offering quicker access to your media gallery. And under the install tab, each game's tile now clearly indicates its platform, such as PS5 or PS4. Also, just as in your game's home screen, different platform versions of the game will now appear up separately. Uh, okay, all right. 
in the game base, we update the following. From the game base control menu, you can now do the following. You can now access the party text chats, send messages from the game base cont uh, control menu in the control center. If you're owner of a party, you can now delete it. From the game base control menu, select the party you want to delete and then select uh, delete party. You can now see how many friends you are, uh, are online, busy or offline under the friends tab. You can now accept, decline, or cancel multiple friend requests at the same time, which is cool. Um, now the trophies. You can now track up up to five trophies per game in the control center using the trophy, tra uh, tro trophy tracker. Sorry, tongue tied. Uh, when viewing the trophy list of games, the trophies will now be displayed vertically instead of horizontally. You okay. will now be able to see more information for each trophy without selecting it, which, thank God. <laughs> um, in the control center, we have updated the following. You can now customize your control center more freely. All the controls at the bottom of the screen can be rearranged. The first time you open the control center, you will see a quick introduction to see its new, uh, new key features. And when you're able to uh, enable the screen reader, you can now use the following features. You can now pause the screen reader by pressing the, the PlayStation button and triangle at the same time. And you can resume by pressing the same button again. You can also make the screen reader repeat anything it reads. To do so, pressing the uh, PlayStation button and R1 at the same time. And there's also some update features. There are new accolade type leader. This is a play for a player who crafts the plan, strategies, and inspires others. You can give accolades like leader to players at their online matches when you want to re encourage positive behavior. All of the players' accolades, including this new type, appear online. And in the places now, we update the following. Your streaming connection test lets you identify and fix problems with your connection. You can now choose your maximum streaming resolution to optimize your game performance. And now you're able to see directly in the game hub if you, if and when a PlayStation Now game is scheduled to be removed. So you can make sure you can try new games or play your favorites while they are still available. Whew, man, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was not expecting this article to go on for that long. <laughs> there was a uh, lot in that update. Yeah. Uh, it's still going. Still going. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it, most of the other stuff is more like housekeeping stuff. So there's nothing really like too too big but initially the big three is the trophy uh system basically changing up the um, internal hard drive being uh, being able so you can actually interchange them and the 3d audio being able to display in your tv speakers but just so you guys know this is beta so it's not the full update so some things might not work fully as intended so this is just a beta form, so you can try it out, but it's not the full feature. Gotcha. I, can I ask a question? Yep. Um, just this is to the group. Uh, how many? Mm -hmm. How many of you are trophy hunters? When I was in high school. Yeah, I when I actually got my PS3, I was for a little bit, and I I kind of stopped. Depends I guess, my, hold on real quick. I really wasn't a trophy hunter. I was more of uh, an achievement hunter. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, duty is same for you, right? You, it was more of an achievement hunter, not trophy hunter? It depends on the game. If it's a game that I'm really into, then I'll try and 100% it. Otherwise, I don't care. Uh, yeah, I, I guess that's the point I'm making. Is I, I think these are all cool. And, you know, I, it, most of you who've known me a super long time when it comes to technology, give me more options. I will always take more options uh, than less options. So I think it's cool, but I don't know. Some of these, it just sounds like a majority of the updates are just going to, like, I don't know. I don't know how many people are actually going to use them. I still like that, like I said, don't get me wrong, though. I like that we're getting the options. I just, eh. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel yeah. too. I mean, I don't even own a PS5. I don't know when I'm ever going to have a PS5. But Never. yeah, it's just <laughs> right. It's just cool that there are these new updates coming out for PS5 owners and people that are in that ecosystem. You know, awesome. Yeah. I'm happy for you for sure. Yeah, yeah. I was actually having this discussion with somebody um, at work today. It's like um, at this point. Um, it's probably best to just put off and get into next gen consoles unless you actually actually have a legit TV to play it on. So at least having a TV that does 4K 120 and everything else, if you don't have it, then what's the point? Right. Look, 
If they want to get me excited, announce PlayStation Home. Come into <clears throat> PlayStation VR, that will be the hub. And, like, I don't know. I think that would be cool. I'd get excited about that. Mm-hmm. I missed it. It was so awesome. It's so funny, too. Like, I was never a big... Because, like, the height of all, the, like, those certain PlayStation things, right? The PSP, the Vita, all that. I was such a Nintendo fanboy, so hardcore. And, like, Pat was the... Or, uh, Dutius was the one really into those things. And I was just like, man, 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 man. No, Nintendo, Nintendo 3DS. I was like, handheld Nintendo is all it's all Nintendo. Like, PlayStation's stupid. And now here I am. I'm like buying, like I bought a PSP off of him. I'm like listing like Vita games that I want to get because of Dutyus. And again, it's just it's all things to Dutyus. One of the three mm-hmm. PSPs I had. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but yeah, good for PlayStation users. Mm-hmm. You know, this is actually pretty good for PlayStation users, in my personal opinion. You guys might disagree, and someone in the people in the chat. But hey, dude, why don't you go ahead and talk about how Horizon got moved to 2022? Sure thing. <laughs> so hey, Horizon got moved to t- 2022. <laughs> um, it, stop right there. Don't say anything else. Yeah, they're they're no, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Go, go, so go. Uh, this came from Jeff Grubb, who yesterday on a podcast with Giant Bomb said wow. that, yep, they're going to delay it to 2022. And then I think Jason Schreier at um, nah, Forbes, uh, wherever yep. he's working. Is yeah. Where's he at? Schreier, Schreier of Schreier News. Yeah. Basically. Bloomberg. Bloomberg. Schreier over Bloomberg picked it up and said, yep, they're going to delay it. So it's kind of a glorified rumor because Sony has not responded to any articles that I saw about the delay of Horizon Forbidden West to 2022. Um, yeah. But if it ends up being true, what's actually coming out on PlayStation 5? this fall besides like death loop. typical okay so death loop but what else <laughs> That's all it. of the playstation 4 games that i haven't played yet i'm gonna yeah. play now on my ps5 okay <laughs> that, backlog, that backlog though it's a problem bro it, it's a problem so everybody kind of knew this was going to happen it's no real surprise but it's also not officially been said so i don't really know like how to take that Like, sure, it's probably, like, 99% delayed, but, like, we didn't get a souped-up Switch, so I'll wait till till Sony says something. Okay. We got something. We, I mean, we kind of got a souped-up Switch, but it's not going to come until it'll be delivered until 2022. I mean, it's better. Yeah, no, I agree. I actually (laughs) agree with better. Shut up. I don't want to talk about All it. Right. It's in quotations, Andrew. That means not actually true. Who earns? Move on. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we all know delays are going to happen. I don't know that anyone's particularly surprised by this. Um, and if it's going to make it a better game, then you know, go for it. It's all, as long as it doesn't release right next to Breath of the Wild two, which is. Like kind of what clipped it at the knees when it first like, when the first Horizon game came out. Like just avoid the Breath of the Wild window, and you're in a good you're in good shape. I think that uh, you know just to make Ryan happy, uh, Shigiri uh, Shigiri Miyamoto, uh, Miyamoto uh, once said that you know um, a, a bad game will always be bad, but uh, a delayed game is eventually good. Isn't that close? I'm close. I don't think that's it. I'm close. You're, you're close, but Cyberpunk I'm, I'm proves, yeah, proves that isn't necessarily true. <laughs> what? Mm. Uh, that wasn't delayed enough. Yeah. It, mm. that game or was be. it delayed too much? No. Mm. no. Mm. You can't. Uh, you could. You could not overbake <laughs> that game. Mm. Needed. Needed. Needed to just be next gen. Uh, what's it? What is Major Games doing? Well, that's. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, just making sure. It's a uh, truly sponsored video. Uh, Twenty. <laughs> it's a truly <laughs> alcoholic beverage in a form of a popsicle. Horizon's gonna have the same problem though. It's gonna be PS4 and PS5. So like, the whole it should only be on current gen discussion is in the same. It's the same boat here. <laughs> well, also too, every single next gen ps5 exclusive is coming out on ps4 so is god of war 2 ragnarok 
that was also announced to be on both PS4 and PS5. I don't get it. I don't know why they're following in the footsteps of Cyberpunk. It should just be out on PS5. Give us a reason to buy a PS5. Give me a reason to buy a PS5. I still don't have one. I can just go get a PS4 from Disc Replay for 200 bucks and play all the new games coming out next year. Unless this is a push, what? Doesn't look near as nice. Yeah, it's true, but I have a 4K <laughs> TV with a PS4 Pro would still make it look pretty good. Yeah. Sure. You don't have the adaptive triggers. That's true, I don't. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay, like... Never mind. No, no, it's it's like so with the PS5, it's it's kind of like a, a a different situation. It's like okay, I want shiny new thing, I get shiny new thing, but it, it's not urgent for you to get it, and it was just to happen that m- some members of us were lucky enough to get it, but it wasn't really like. Okay, I, it was urgent. I need to get it now. It was more or less like, oh, there's an opportunity to get it. I got it. Yeah. And... Don't get me wrong. If you have a PS5 already, awesome. I'm happy for you. That's great. Seriously. Thank you. You know, um, honestly, thanks. it doesn't sound like you're happy. Um, it sounds uh, <laughs> not, not like that at all. I'm just. <laughs> I realize that. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is the fact that um, if you have a, a PS4, or a PS4 Pro. Uh, it's the same thing with me having the um, Xbox One X. I, I'm sufficient with that because it does the exact same things as the PS5. Um, yeah. And it's not really like an urgent to be like, oh, I need to go hurry up and go get the Series X. No, nah, sure. not right now. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's like more or less you want to, you do, or, or you do just mm-hmm. either or. But like you're just settle down. You're good. <laughs> so, do you have anything else to say on the topic, my good friend Dudius? I mean, Ratchet and Clank looks really good. Like, it does. Okay, <laughs> it everyone, does. you guys need to go and watch Video Game Donkey's episode, a video on it because it's really, really funny. First of all, and that game could have totally come out on the PS4. Just saying. Yeah, sure, it but, look but it looks really nice. good on the PS5. Just, it's I'm really just saying. Go, go watch his video, and you'll, you'll, <laughs> you'll have sure a good one half. This is now a sponsored episode. <laughs> We're sponsored by Video Game Donkey. <laughs> I'm in his big. I'm in his pockets. Or he's in my pockets, or whatever. <laughs> Other way around, buddy. You, you got it yeah, right first. You got it. You, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So we're not even hitting it big yet. We've already sold out. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Orange Cabs. I wish. Okay. Anyway, so moving right along. Um, Halo is the greatest franchise to ever exist. It had a little bit of a down period. All right, Halo 5, we're not going to really talk about it too much, but it sounds and looks like Halo's back. So if you guys weren't aware, uh, this there's this Halo Infinite um, like testing Halo Insider program thingy that you could sign up for, and they're having these like flights. And the current Halo Infinite beta flight is live and runs from Thursday, July 29th, so yesterday, until Monday, August second, twenty twenty one. So you have this weekend to play it. There's you gotta you gotta uh, log in and create uh, a profile through Halo Waypoint and do this long list of things to be able to hop in the flight and play it. But a lot of people are saying that it's really really great. From what I'm gathering, I've been on Twitter all day just seeing a bunch of people that I follow just tweeting about it. Uh, one in particular, actually from Nintendo Life. Uh, it's funny that he was talking about it because he's the, from is John Cartwright from Nintendo Li- uh, Life. I have a tweet up right here. May not be a graphical powerhouse, but texture work is very nice. Uh, and he just has a picture of him holding, you know, a battle rifle. And basically, <laughs> that's what a lot of people were saying was the game might not be the most beautiful and just like graphically, you know, absolutely amazing game, you know, but just it's Halo. It plays like Halo. It runs like Halo. It feels like Halo, but in like a modern setting. It, it, a lot of people are saying that it's definitely going to be right up there with the latest Call of Duties and everything like that and have a really big chance to compete in that arena because there's so many different things coming out. Like uh, the new Battlefield got announced was at 2044. I don't remember the numbers, but that game looks awesome and people are worried that Halo wasn't going to be able to compete with it. But after seeing all these tweets coming out, Sounds to me like Halo's doing pretty freaking great. So I didn't really get a chance to look into this for myself to see if I could log into the Halo Waypoint. I missed this opportunity for this flight. 
definitely going to try for the next one when they announce it. But here's some of the things that are uh, included in the flight. Arena maps. There's three maps. Bazaar, Recharge, and Live Fire. From the arena game mode will be introduced in the first Halo Infinite test, letting players explore the environments for themselves. Gameplay versus bots. On the three aforementioned, aforementioned maps, players will be able to square up against the newly introduced bots, which are positioned as a way for new players to become accustomed to the game through the new Halo Academy. Weapon drills. Players will also be able to use an assortment of Halo Infinite weapons for the first time through the Halo Academy weapon drills. The weapons that will be featured include, there's an entire list of things, don't really feel like blaming them off, but there's a lot of stuff, including sniper rifle, plasma pistol, pulse carbine, heat waves, etc., etc. Battle pass and menu UI. An important aspect of any game is the UI players use to navigate, and 343i is looking for feedback here. Players will be able to test the Halo Infinite menus, customization, and battle pass UI. Players will be given a bit of Halo Infinite currency to help with the testing, although anything that is unlocked will not carry over into the main game. There's a new Halo Waypoint. Halo Waypoint is being rebuilt from the ground up for Halo Infinite, including a new mobile app. The first Halo Infinite technical preview will include the first test of the new Waypoint experience on web, Android, and iOS. So, with that being said, who's excited for Halo this fall? Oh my gosh, I cannot <laughs> wait to get into this. Uh, yes, uh, Bellarific from the press pool, you have a, a question? Uh, it, was a, uh, it was one of those. Like, I am excited because it's Halo, not necessarily because of anything they've showed me this, this far. Mm. Uh, one thing I have found incredibly interesting is, have we heard of any sort of Battle Royale uh, mode yet? Oh, no. Because if I, yeah, because if I remember correctly, uh, we have not had that yet. I'm actually quite surprised that they haven't gone down that road. Mm -hmm. um, I, in fact, uh, there's a couple of uh, guys at work who are big gamers who are into the Battle Royale scene, and they said they will not actually buy this game if it does not have a Battle Royale mode. Wow. Which I thought was That's strange, but I actually think straight up team deathmatch. I think those who do that, I think we're the weird ones now. Yeah. Like, I think everybody does, like, squad battle royale type stuff. And, man, I got to tell you, I, I just like old school, straight up team deathmatch. Uh, I mean, uh, you know what else I want to see? Uh, uh, Rod, eh? is, is, uh Oh, crap. What was it called? Uh, Griffball? Uh, uh, yeah, Griff. Yeah, it's Griffball? Griffball, yeah. yeah. Oh, I want to see someone do an updated version of Griffball. Uh, within this game, uh, yeah. because man, that that was, I, I think Halo got to a point where it's almost GTA uh, esque in a way, and that <laughs> well, actually maybe they might have done it first, but like the, the crazy different features and modes that you were able to pull off and do within yeah. their little sandbox that they created was so cool. I, I I'm more looking forward to doing that stuff and like downloading maps that other people have sort of created or and the uh, that have these different scenarios and different things that you can do. Uh, that's where I'm excited. The regular game and the campaign, I am so out of touch with the story. I have no idea what's going on. Um, so, but in terms of like what the user can do and the tools that they give us uh, and, and see what other people create, that's where I'm excited. Right. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think that's uh, where Halo stands the test of time is just sitting down with your friends and just having a blast, whether it's playing zombies, Griff Ball, you know, team deathmatch like you mentioned, or even big team deathmatch, just to name a few different types of matches you can play. Like, I can't remember, or I'm, I can't, I can remember all <laughs> the times where we would, you know, uh, Bellerific, we, you would be in your room, I'd be in mine, land cable, you know, across the hall, you know, yeah. or even go into some of your old, your friends' houses. Like you invited me over a couple of times, and we played and did all these different things. And then eventually, getting into Halo 3's online, it was just a blast. I've got so many nostalgic memories, and I feel like that's what Halo Infinite's trying to capture is nostalgia. They're trying to bring back us, the the old school Halo fanboys, to come back in and be like, guys, listen, I know you love your battle royales on your Fortnites, your you know Apex Legends, but this is real online. This real gamers come to play, and they're coming in hot. I just, I can't wait. I am so beyond excited. And the fact that the multiplayer is free to play on Game Pass Day 1 Minute 1 blows me away. But that does make me question, and they still have yet to answer this. Does that mean the campaign is going to be $70? Probably. I don't think it'll be 70 That's what it sounds I don't think it'll like. be 70 I think it'll be 60 You think it'll be 60 Is that because it's not officially a next-gen game? It's still going to be on both? Has Xbox released any other games at 70 you know, that's a great question. I don't know, I don't Johnny. Think they have. 
Nothing. Black Kool Aid, you are our our Xbox fanboy here. Uh, have we gotten any seventy dollar priced Xbox uh, One X Series S thingies, whatever the console is? No, because they they haven't really had like an official one because they just redesigned their packaging as well. So, but uh, as of right now, the only thing that I've seen at that seventy dollar price mark were like deluxe editions, like mm -hmm. with the sports games and stuff like that. Yeah. However. PS5 has. Yeah. They have released seventy dollar games. Right. Wait. Well, we're talking about Xbox here. We're talking about the better ecosystem. Okay. We're talking about the true gamers here. We're not talking about your guys' freaking paperweights. Okay. <laughs> oh, look, better ecosystem. I'll give you. I'll give you better ecosystem. It's hard not to say that. You know, it, man, that is an uphill. You know, go. That's like trying to go uphill on ice skates. Um, <laughs> yes, the better ecosystem right now is Xbox. I mean, it's just the best deal in gaming. Like, you know, I mean, they have the best ecosystem. Um, oh yeah, for uh, sure. But yeah, sorry, sorry, I sorry, sorry. No, you, you're 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 fine. But yes, uh, I I have yet to see a seventy dollar game. But in all honesty, I do see this happening, but I doubt it will happen for Halo Infinite. Yeah, I just. I just hope, you know, that, I don't know, I, I don't want to see Halo go strictly just multiplayer one day, like with the next Halo, it's just a multiplayer game. I, I enjoy the campaign a lot, especially cooperative, you know, like I would love to do some streams every once in a while where like four of us sit down, you know, in this group and we play Halo Infinite's campaign together. I think that would make for a lot of fun and I'm really hoping to get to do that, but I don't know. I mean, it's going to be available on Game Pass anyway, so it's not like it's going to be that big of a deal. We all have Game Pass, I assume. <laughs> so, I mean, it's 10 bucks a month, for crying out loud. You you can have Game Pass. It's not that bad, but I, I'm excited. Like I said, I, I've been seeing a lot of people talking about it. Um, I can't wait for myself to hop in. Like I said, I'm going to try to get into the next flight, which is, I think, hold on, I have it up right here. The next flight will be... Start time and date is currently unknown. No, never mind. I lied, everybody. So um, I'm going to hop on tonight, actually, and get all of my stuff situated. So when that next flight does pop up, I can be one of the, you know, 100,000 people to hop in and play. So I'll um, be with, with you. Oh, I can't wait. I think we should try to make something out of it. We'll have a good time. But moving right along, I want to go over to Bellerific. So I know you've had some issues in the past with Joy-Con Drift, correct? Yes. Have you successfully found anything that can, you know, combat that? I think you mentioned something about Joy-Con foam pads. Is that what this is all about? So, so a lot of people thought that these foam pads, uh, you know, in the new Zelda Joy-Cons, people, as soon as uh, someone got their hands on one, opened it up, they saw these foam strips in them, uh, conveniently around the same place where this late, this other fix that just recently got discovered, um, which was taking like a little square and putting it behind the joystick. And then uh, it's like a very small pad, like not very thick at all uh, enough. So much so that you could put the joy con back together. But what it does is uh, that pad will press up against um, <clears throat> the bottom of the joystick uh, uh, sort of uh, module uh, module. And it will uh, help it uh, sensor. Uh, or it'll help the sensor catch which direction you're going kind of help, uh, help eliminating the drift. Now, from what I understand, that's not necessarily a permanent fix, but it hasn't been long enough to, for anyone else to uh, see um, just how long that little Band-Aid will last. So mm -hmm. there's that that happened. And then shortly after this, people got their hands on the, the Zelda Joy-Cons. They opened it up and they saw the strips and they're like, oh, maybe Nintendo's trying to proactively, you know, fix this without saying, hey, we fixed this. Uh, but <laughs> turns out, uh, if you look at the screen, uh, thank you, Dudius, it, the yellow Joy-Con is from a Joy-Con from 2019. Uh, we took those images from uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, Spawnwave. He put those up on Twitter, I believe. Uh, and the uh, blue one is the Zelda uh, uh, Skyward Sword themed Joy-Cons. The yellow one is from the 2019 yellow Joy-Cons when those came out, and those were already in there. Now, with that being said, everyone was trying to debunk the fact that that's not what those strips are for because it came out in 2019. That's not necessarily the case, in my opinion, because Nintendo's known about this, I'm sure, for a while. If 
if the controllers at any point ever drifted, they were probably the first ones to figure it out. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't, and, and so that means they could have been retroactively trying to figure out like how can we fix this. Mm-hmm. So I think what I would like to see is you know what the long term effects are with those yellow joy cons and whether or not they eventually drift or the Zelda joy cons like how long it takes before a drift happens there. Um, me myself, uh, what I have done is I just go to Amazon and buy a new thumbstick for ten dollars and I install it myself. Now, Nintendo did irritate me recently because they made the ribbon cable that connects to the thumbstick shorter, which just yeah, <laughs> infuriated me. And so, like, I had this small little Joy-Con open with my you know giant hand. I don't even have giant hands. It's just the damn Joy Cons are so small. I can only imagine Pat trying to get this ribbon cable in place. <laughs> Uh, because <laughs> what's that? It said sucks. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so there is there there is a solve for it. You don't have to send it in and you know wait forever for them to fix it and send it back. I don't even know if they're still doing that. Um, easy solution is well, not necessarily easy, but a better solution in my opinion. Order it off Amazon. Ten bucks usually comes with a uh, a Y a Y screwdriver, um, and replace it yourself. So. A lot of people got excited, major gains, hoping that maybe this was a fix, yeah. but it's not necessarily the case. Uh, and only time will tell if those strips will help. Um, but with that being said, that's everything about that particular story. Right on. Yeah, so I have yet to experience Joy-Con Drift. I, I'm surprised. Um, I don't know. I guess I've just been lucky up until a couple nights ago. So we've had our Switch for like three years now. Uh, And my wife noticed that when we were playing Mario Golf, she, it just, it would just, because she uses the left Joy-Con. And that's, that was the one that it really started in, right? Was the left Joy-Cons? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Like, that's when, like, when we, when people first started, like, reporting on this drift, I, I was looking at some articles earlier before we went live, and it was with the left one. Like, the left one was the one that had the most issues. And, uh, it just so happened to be that's the one that she was using, and, Every time, you know, she would be doing something, she noticed that it would kind of just go to the left a bit. And I'm like, there it is. It's finally starting to happen to us. And I'm like, now I'm trying to look at, you know, ways to fix it. And I'm glad you brought that up. You, you just go into Amazon buying a, that little, you know, thing for 10 yeah. bucks. Look, oh, look at that. It's got it right there. Beautiful. I'm going to have to do that. We're also just looking into buying some new Joy-Cons too, just because we only have the one pair and, you know, having friends come over and stuff like that. It, it's always just nice to have extras. Um, but thank you for that. That was a, uh, yeah, I, I hope that this is something that, you know, long-term effects will work. Um, it's kind of crazy that they haven't found a solution to this yet because it's Nintendo. You know, they make enough money. They could do something to fix this. <laughs> business company will business. I will yep. say, I will say, replace the, if you're going to replace the thumbstick, um, Go to Spawn Wave. He does a very good job um, laying out how to do it. Uh, and if you want to try the uh, square on the back of the module for the th- uh, thumbstick, he has another video for that. Uh, and I would definitely, definitely check that out because he does a very, very good job when it comes to explaining things, explaining things to newbies. I didn't start opening things up until like the last year and a half, and it's all because of Spawn Wave. So right. go check out his tech videos because they're very good. Yeah, this episode is actually sponsored by Spawnwave Media. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hitting up all the like we're gonna get... tonight. I feel, uh, like we're gonna, I feel like we're going to get in some sort of legal trouble. Yeah, I, I know I, we probably I, and he won't. keeps saying that, and I keep going, ooh. <laughs> 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 like, who are we? Like, it's not going to happen. But right. Just, it, like, there's always this little twinge that happens when you do it. I pucker my butt cheeks just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I puckered my butt cheeks earlier today. When I saw when? that Pokemon Snap is getting free DLC, that's right, everybody. The hit game that I convinced every single one of our viewers to go out and buy with my review back on episode three of this here podcast. I convinced everyone with my storytelling. I painted a picture of the perfect game, and you guys all went out and bought it, right? You love it. You're all playing to this day still, right? No? no? Single person? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, new Pokemon. I'm glad we all came together on that one. Yeah. 
yeah. yeah. So new Pokemon Snap <laughs> came back came out back in April, and it's amazing. It's a fantastic game. Uh, it's really really short. Uh, it came with 24 tracks. If you include the day and night cycles of each one of the tracks, a bunch of different Pokemon. You can capture them in different, you know, uh, doing different activities, different types of things. It's a lot of fun. Well, Nintendo has graced us with three new tracks and 20 new Pokemon, which is fantastic. Uh, people on the internet, though, of course, will be people on the internet. They were kind of like, oh, it means they shipped a broken game. It wasn't finished, blah, blah, blah. No, the game was finished. It's a good solid 16 hours of gameplay for mine anyway, if you beat the game. And now you just have more. What's wrong with that? They want people to come back and play their games. So they're going to give out things. I'm surprised it's free. That's what I wanted to talk about. I was legitimately shocked when I saw the article pop up on Cerebi.net seeing that they were releasing three new tracks with 20 new Pokemon to capture in different types of ways for free. Thank you, Nintendo, for not only giving me the Switch OLED, Nintendo Dread, but now we also get three new tracks with Pokemon Snap and 20 new Pokemon to capture. So the three new tracks are Mighty Wide River, which is a nurturing water source that provides the whole of Bella Bella Olivia, I cannot pronounce this island, with sustenance. You'll be conducting research as you ride down the river, so be on the lookout for rapids as you search for Pokemon and keep your camera ready so you don't miss capturing them in action. There's a new wilderness and canyon stage, both day and night variants, barren wilderness. In this area, you'll research the badlands of Volca Island, where dry winds from the desert blow. This area has many uh, peculiar features from geysers to poisonous gas-spewing swamps. Pokemon may be hiding underground or in the rocky cliffs, so keep your eyes peeled for them while you're on your expedition. I had a conversation the other day with uh, a good friend of the show, uh, Dan, a.k.a. Seltyverse, on twitch.tv slash Seltyverse, and we were talking about how amazing this game is going to look on the Switch OLED, because this game already looks fantastic on in handheld mode on the base Switch and on a 4K TV. So this game with the colors popping, ooh, mwah, chef's freaking kiss my guys, for that Switch OLED. So, I was just curious. Uh, you guys already really answered. None of you have Pokemon Snap. I'm the only one that got into it. I mean, I Real quick, it. Before, I hold on, <laughs> everyone. Uh, Bellerific, you may talk. You have the floor. Uh, so, so I just want to clarify. It was Dan, I spent $30 in Pokemon Unite Celtiverse that said this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's okay. well on his way to spending the full 130 to max out three of his items so he can actually win games on Pokemon Unite. But that's a conversation for a different day. <laughs> but I, I could go, like I was saying, I, I am I the only one that played and loved Pokemon Snap? I played it and I, I bought it and I played it. It just, mm. it's Pokemon Snap. I haven't touched it, but uh, yeah. I, I would like to, to back us up real quick and ask a question, because what you said made me think about something. People are complaining about free DLC Whatever yeah. you're doing over there. I'm po I'm playing Pokemon Snap. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, complaining about free DLC saying they released an unfinished game. Do you think they would still be complaining if it were not free DLC? Oh, absolutely. That's why I said people on the internet will be people on the internet. No matter what any company or anybody says or does or whatever, someone on the internet is going to find a reason to be upset about it. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. I just thought it was... Uh, an interesting take for anybody to be complaining about free DLC and wondered what uh, their reaction might be in the opposite case of paid DLC. Yeah, because, I mean, they'd probably sell it for, like, 20 bucks, and people would be like, oh, just three courses and 20 new Pokemon for 20 bucks, And then they were going to go, the Pokemon fandom is so annoying. Their, that community is toxic, 100%. Like, when Sword and Shield came out and people found out it wasn't the full almost 1,000 pokemon in the pokedex people lost their freaking minds and i'm like why do you need to capture 1000 pokemon in one game that's just a little a little crazy to me um and they ended up putting out dlc and complained about that as well i just think it's just pokemon fans in general man i think they're just toxic so they are they're going to complain no matter what i would challenge every one of them to show their playtime of that game and if it's over 40 hours they could rightly shut the up yeah, I, uh, it's funny because we kind of uh, had a conversation about Sword and Shield, I think, on our Pokemon Unite uh, stream. Uh, Dudius was actually talking, uh, he was saying something about it in the chat, and I had mentioned how like the game was okay, it's not the best, 
And then I looked at my play time and I think I have like a hundred hours <laughs> <laughs> for a game that I'm like, it's okay. It's not the best, but if anyone knows me, Pokemon is literally like Pokemon and Halo are probably my bread and butter. Uh, that's why I, I chose to pick both of these articles to talk about tonight because they're, you know, everything I love about po- video games. See, the trick with Pokemon is you just got to skip like three or four generations and then just play. So like I played Gen 2 and then I waited till Gen 8 and I was mm. I was more mm. than happy with the game. Uh, mm. Mm. See, yeah. What I did was I played none of them until Sword and Shield, and I was like, yeah, "This is and this has got a charm to it." Like, I don't, what's everyone so angry about? I don't, bunch of babies. I would Listen. just like to mention Pokemon Go. Johnny. Oof, oof, Pokemon Go is oof, yuck, not not a good time. I was gonna say if you wanted to have the true Pokemon experience, in my opinion. I recommend all of you guys going back and playing Gen 3, which is the Hoenn. Pokemon Sarubi. Stadium! <laughs> <laughs> but Gen 3 is all about that Dungeon Hero Tower, man. Emerald, you know, I would just go back and play those. So, yeah. Anyway, new stages for Pokemon Snap. It's exciting. It's fun. There's 20 new Pokemon. Uh, Serebii.net being... Uh, Joe over there uh, being absolutely amazing has a bunch of uh, screenshots up. They've added a bunch of new Pokemon into the game. Like Shroomish is a new one you can capture from Gen 3. Uh, you can, and, and by capture, I do hope you, you guys know I mean like capture photos of. I don't want people in the chat to be like, uh, oh, you can't capture Pokemon. But anyway, uh, Feraligator's in it, which is, you know, an o- uh, OG Pokemon from Gen 2. It's exciting, you know, Gyarados, more stuff for Pinsir. It's, it's a lot of fun. I'm excited. I can't wait to hop back in. I've been needing a reason to go back to that game, and now I have one. I was going to wait until the OLED came out, but uh, I'll, I'll pop it back up. You know, I'll load it back in. So, yeah. Well, that covers the news for this week. Yeah. What? Bellerific? Yes? We have about nine minutes. I would love uh, to... I've played five hours of Skyward Sword. I would absolutely Ooh. Ooh. love to give my opinion of the game. Yeah, let's go. I would actually love to hear that. I've uh, I've played the OG version, well, the Wii version. But, uh, yeah, I uh, not the uh, HD yet. So, look, I, I think I, look, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I already said it in the chat. I got some funny looks. I got some, I got some like hard blinks from. A was, Biden gif. It was just and, me. Uh, it was just me. <laughs> just say me. Yeah. From from, from <laughs> Dudius. <laughs> but from Dudius and and even even uh, Rye Guy, you know, agreed with you. Uh, but I think I like Skyward Sword more than I like Breath of the Wild, and here's why: the five hours I've spent in this game have flown by. I absolutely like these characters more. I love the color palette more. I love the graphics more. I like the gameplay more. Yeah, that's what I said. I said gameplay. I've played with the button combinations, and I've played with the motion controls. Now, I want to preface this by saying I did not play... The the, the Wii guy in this group did not play Skyward Sword on the Wii. I've played it now, and the motion controls that I'm experiencing right now that I've seen and heard everybody say... Not everybody. A large portion of Twitter say are broken. They're just a bunch of babies who just don't like motion controls. There's nothing wrong with them. They're not broken. They work just fine. Give it a try if you're remotely curious. I actually think they work better than the button controls, uh, given that it was designed around motion controls. Uh, with that being said, the, I, I don't know. What, the story, I think, is better. Like, you get more story right away. Like, you're flying through the air on a giant bird. Like, I mean, come on. What's not better about this game? Like, it feels like a Zelda game. Breath of the Wild, to me, didn't feel like a Zelda game. So I'm going to hear why. Because, number one, I don't care for the item system. I don't care for their dungeon setup. I don't really... (sighs) The story feels super slow. And there's a whole giant world that I have to run around and figure out what to do without a whole lot of direction. And on top of that, I think that it's just, 
it's just too slow for me, I guess. I, I don't know what else to say. Uh, across the board, I prefer Skyward Sword. I'm going to beat Skyward Sword before I even beat Breath of the Wild. And you know why? <laughs> because every time I go into Breath of the Wild, it feels like a chore. It feels like a chore. And Duty has said what he said, and I know he went back and he beat it, but even he will attest, he played Horizon. Now, this could just mean Horizon's just that much better of a game, but he played Horizon just like for a little bit just to get started, and he put down Breath of the Wild, beat Horizon, then went back to Skyward Sword. So I, I think I think that leads a little bit of credence to my argument, um, but even with all that being said, yeah, I I like Skyward Sword better. I don't care who knows it. Come for me. <laughs> I'll send the Addy. You come up. You want to scrap? Let's go. I don't care. Skyward oh. Sword is a better game than Breath of the Wild. I said it. I I will Thank say you. Skyward what? Sword feels like a better Zelda game than Breath of the Wild, but. That comes with the caveat that Breath of the Wild, to me, kind of felt like Zelda-themed Skyrim. Listen, listen, listen. Can I have the floor? <laughs> Breath of the Wild is, a, I mean, is the great value Elder Scrolls, okay? Plain and simple, okay? <laughs> Zelda Skyward Sword is Zelda at its best. You have dungeons, you've got a great chemistry between Link and Zelda, you've got a great supporting cast. My boy Groose is hysterical. Love him. <laughs> Absolutely love him. The freaking graphics, let's go ahead and just back up a second. I liked what you had to say about that Bellerific, because Breath of the Wild, it's not as pretty as all y'all think it is. The game doesn't look that great. I personally don't like that art style. It's one of my least favorites in the entire series. I prefer Skyward Sword's graphical art style a little bit more i actually think twilight princess is the best followed by wind waker and minish cap and you know that artsy cutesy style that is really great but skyward sword is still really very pretty especially on a 4k tv i was blown away when i was flying around skyloft just having a great time and then when you first dive into the Farron woods and you're running around you see the greens and it's so vibrant and beautiful and alive that's the biggest part. This game is a lie. Breath of the Wild is boring. There is nothing going on for hours. Hours. I am 35 hours into that game. I have two stupid, giant, dumb beasts taken down. And then I'm running around getting slaughtered by these stupid horse monster thingies. Because I need to go and get that's, that's electric Skyrim, arrows. Bro. I need to go and get electric arrows to take down the... Take down this other beast, and I can't even freaking do it because I'm not powered <laughs> up enough. Uh, send so, me on my path. Hold on. Uh, send me on my linear path because that's what yeah. a Zelda game is. Go from dungeon to dungeon. Uh, let me collect the items within each dungeon. I my sword's not gonna break, bro. Okay, I don't care. I understand the shield breaks and Skyward Sword, but bro, I always have a sword. You know how many times I was playing through Breath of the Wild without an item? I'm just like, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. This is stupid. This is a video game. I don't want realism. I don't play video games to realism. I play video games to escape, okay? My life fucking sucks. <laughs> I'm just joking. My life doesn't suck. <laughs> I was, I was about to say it. join the club, buddy, but... Uh... <laughs> no, but for real. <laughs> I leave my world, my life, to enter these video games, and I want to have a great, fun time. And to me, Breath of the Wild is just... It's not fun. And I, I just... I think a lot of you guys... Just, I don't know. I don't understand. I want to understand. I do. I want to get it. I, like I said, 35 hours is a long time to sit and play a video game and still to just go, huh? I don't know. I, I'm just so glad to see that me and my brother, you know, the, the Bella Bros were, were coming in, dominating. Skyward Swords better than Breath of the Wild. End of discussion. Oh, we're going to get some hate for that one. Yeah, we are. Fuck okay. it. Like I said, I I agree that that uh, Skyward Sword is a better Zelda game than Breath of the Wild, but I I spent a lot more time playing Breath of the Wild than Skyward Sword. Right. Put it that way. Yeah. <sighs> well, this has been the Babylon Games Podcast. If you guys like what you heard and you want to support the show, make sure you follow along on twitch.tv slash Babylon Gaming. Subscribe to the channel as well. If you don't have any bucks to toss, you can go over to our YouTube, youtube.com slash Babylon Gaming, where you can find all of our VODs up there. Hit that subscribe button, like the dang old videos, and we will catch you guys next Friday over at twitch.tv slash Babylon Gaming at 8 p.m. Central Time. With that being said, uh, 
take this podcast with you. Ryan's not here. I did my best. Nice. You forgot the first part. <laughs> you don't know the first part. <laughs> it's dangerous to go alone. Take, take this podcast, podcast with you. With you.